You see me, you want me, think how can I win her? Well, maybe a cocktail, then Nando's for dinner. But just to make certain, you're going to make me. Do take me where any real playboy would take me. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Miss Pauline Carr. Walk in reception there and just ding the bell Book the executive suite, maybe a tetra I'll gently palm you while you're watching sex cetera Or rooms have satellite at the Marriott Hotel I'll take a shower with the free shower gel No shit, it's molten brown, then you can undress There's a call me trouser press So start up your chariot Take me to the Marriott. Ah! Look, Kerry Katona, that bloke from the bill, and Simon Le Bon's at the bar. Gail Porter, Ray Stubbs chatting with Callum Best, and John Leslie chills by the spa. There's Cheryl and Ashley, I'd love to see their house. The regional manager of Carver Warehouse They're all at the Marriott Hotel Even the toilets have that potpourri smell I'll don my terry robe and smolder like lava They may chalk in a free half bottle of Carver It's all quite decadent at the Marriott Hotel When I first stepped inside I thought fucking hell I shan't forget the time I shagged Simon Cowell Cos he nicked a king-sized towel But what happens at the Marriott Stays at the Marriott Ah, oh, the Marriott Ah, oh, the Marriott Take me to the Marriott Hello, Blackpool Oh, hello. Uh, oh, you, you can go now. Go on, off you go. I've had him. Yeah. I like his beard. It's like a bath scrub. The insides of my thighs are like porcelain. <laughs> now, do you know, I like singing that song, but um, what bothers me about it is um, my thong rides right up. Yeah. Honestly, it's so small, you could floss your teeth with it. You won't want to, though. <laughs> you would, though, wouldn't you? Hey? You dirty bastard. Look at him grinning. <laughs> Hey, you were clapping a bit too vigorously there. You're supposed to take your hands out of your pockets. <laughs> so, uh, and no looking down my top from up there, yeah? Actually, you might as well. They, uh, they cost me enough. <laughs> yeah, no, I had a boob job. It was a choice between a boob job and a brand new Zanussi washing machine. Yeah. Yeah, it was a choice between uh, twin tubs that could take a heavy load and a new washing machine. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. But, uh, do you like my dress? Yeah? Do you like it? Oh, yeah, I've had him, yeah. <laughs> he had a cock like a bookie's pencil. <laughs> you should come round again sometime. I'll put on some proper music next time, like the minute waltz. <laughs> or maybe we could do it in the kitchen, so I can tie my fucking egg. <laughs> I don't know. No, but this is my dress. Uh, yes, it used to belong to Baby Spice, then it belonged to Charlotte Church, then me, yeah. They took it in for Baby Spice, let it out for Charlotte Church, and... Uh, Took it in again for me. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> OK. Take four ordinary blokes you might find in any town or village. <laughs> now, I'm not entirely certain these blokes were on drugs, but I think the odds of four sober men collectively deciding to go to the hairdressers then have a group photograph taken naked <laughs> are minimal. Clearly, they're on ecstasy. Ecstasy makes you lose your inhibitions. Yeah, yeah. Inhibitions are there for a reason, people, to stop you doing shit like that. <laughs> the three guys on the right totally fell off the radar. Um, but worst of all, the bloke on the top left tragically went on to become Engelbert Humperdinck. <laughs> Tee hee hee. OK, shock tactics. The right Reverend Clement West. He gave a cracking sermon at Roger Daltrey's wedding. It went down a storm. 
he went out so well that one of the roadies gave him a gram of speed. And here he is six hours later. <laughs> Completely chewed off his own jaw. <laughs> it's some consolation that he does win the odd prize at fairgrounds. <laughs> Although, interestingly, he never wins anything in the East Anglia region. <laughs> Grandads. We all love granddads, eh? Crown green bowling on a Sunday, post office every other day of the week. <laughs> this hombre met Pete Doherty at a round table charity fundraiser. And here he is two weeks later. <laughs> Completely went off the rails, left his wife of 64 years and moved in with his dealer, her. <laughs> Don't be deceived by her looks. Don't be deceived by her looks. She was the most vicious, mean motherfucker you could ever know not to meet. She, she was very violent. I, I was round at her house once with a mate of mine, and I was, you know, getting some stuff. And, um, and, uh, and, and she was knitting a sweater, a polo neck sweater for her grandson, and it had quite a long neck. Right? And my mate just said, oh, is your grandson a giraffe? And uh, she shot him in the face with a nail gun. <laughs> she'd freak people out, she'd get them in a the front room, and she'd say, by well, the time I finish this Horlix, either you'll be dead or I'll be asleep. <laughs> like most dealers, she never touched her own supply. Um, occasionally, she'd have half an E during songs of praise. <laughs> That's my <me> brother-in-law. <laughs> He's a dick. <laughs> Nothing to do with the lecture. I just like to show that picture. <laughs> okay, so drugs can make you do some pretty destructive things, right? And I don't mean waking up one morning in a skip wearing a nappy, a sombrero, with lipstick round your nipples and an action man shoved up your ass. Cos we've all done that. <laughs> and people can also become addicted to porn. Yeah, sex phone chat lines, very addictive. I, I rang one of them, you know, cos I was quite open-minded. This woman was on the other end of the phone, and she said, that, she said, what have you got on? I said, I've got the movie channel on, I'm watching The Elephant Man, it's a cracking film. <laughs> she said, well, I'm the kind of woman who likes a good length. I said, well, you love The Elephant Man, it's over two hours long. <laughs> She said, no, she said, I mean, I like a good length with a swollen, bulbous head. I said, babe, you've got to check out the elephant man. <laughs> it ticks all your boxes. <laughs> Hello, good evening, and aha! 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 Hey, you sick of it, yeah? Huh? <laughs> I'm not, it doesn't bother me. <laughs> yes. Good evening and welcome to Alan Partridge will rock you into Forward Solutions with Whiskers. <laughs> what happened to the thunder flash? That's supposed to blow up when I point at it like God. And then I was going to say Alan Partridge will rock you into Forward Solutions. What? Yes, yes, with Whiskers. <laughs> and I just start by thanking my uh, dance troupe, my cheerleaders, Hot and Pot. Uh, collectively known as Hot Pot. <laughs> there used to be three of them. They were known as Hot Pot and Red Cabbage. <laughs> but, um, due to the credit crunch, I had to let Red Cabbage go. <laughs> there they are. Hello, girls. Getting changed. Oh, oh, saw your bra. <laughs> they don't mind. Really? OK, I'll go over here. <laughs> Bras are interesting, aren't they? They used to be all uh, lift and separate. Now it's all squash them together. Make your minds up, girls. <laughs> Oh, bras. Jesus. I do not believe that was an accident. <laughs> OK, let's begin. Let me start by taking you back in time to late August. Um, I was sitting on the teak veranda of the Admiral's Cocktail Lounge in Bournemouth. Um, you won't know it, it's members only. As I was sitting there, sipping a cool glass of white wine, sandwiched between Monty Don and TV's Alistair Stewart from Police Camera Action. <laughs> and I remember thinking to myself, Alan, you crazy mofo. <laughs> it doesn't get much better than this. <laughs> I remember uh, Monty was uh, refilling my glass with a, a crisp Australian white. Um, he's always got dirt under his fingernails, Monty Don. Um, I, I don't mind, he's a gardener. Yeah. You see, the same thing on the pet shop, boys, and it's a little bit unsavoury. <laughs> But as I was sitting there, enjoying the good life, 
My mind drifted back to that time five years earlier when I shat my pants in PC World. <laughs> I just had a major television chat show cancelled, and as with any major trauma, something had to give. <laughs> that something, in my case, was the small valve at the base of my lower intestine. <laughs> But I didn't panic. Fortunately, I was wearing my M&S cellular briefs, which acted as a kind of makeshift hammock. <laughs> I was lonely and I was depressed. I checked into the Ibis Hotel in Canary Wharf, where I paid £14.50 to watch Billy Elliot. And that film inspired me. I thought, if that small gay Geordie <laughs> can overcome prejudice and bigotry, and being a Geordie. <laughs> then I can overcome my problems. People can change, countries can change. Look at Wales. <laughs> Five years ago, nobody gave a damn about Wales. Now they make Doctor Who there. <laughs> In fact, look inside a Dalek, you may well find a bitter X minor at the controls. <laughs> OK, let's, let's kick it up a gear. <clears throat> this is state-of-the-art technology. It's an electronic gauntlet linked to a computer. I'm going manual. OK. Um, it's a combination of an iPhone and a Wii. And it's called a YI. And, uh, and interestingly, it was developed in Newcastle. Um, by myself, Intel and Jimmy Nail. Um, I only wear the glove on the one hand, uh, a bit like Michael Jackson, uh, except my glove will not be used for evil. OK, let's, uh, let's start by having a bit of fun. If people were pies, who would have a positive filling? Let's take a look. <laughs> That's right, it's Trevor Phillips, Chairman of the Commission for Racial Equality. Trevor is a very positive person. I met him two years ago at the Pride of Britain Awards, uh, where he was winning an award for being uh, least racist person or something. <laughs> and. Um, Afterwards, after the ceremony, he'd, he'd, he'd had a couple of drinks. And actually, I think I'll do this. Um, <laughs> that's, a, that, that's a bit weird. Um, yeah, he, he'd had a couple of drinks. And Trevor made some pretty, pretty derogatory comments about the Welsh. And I said, hey, you, hey, Trevor, give that award back. And he said, Alan, he said, I'm not racist. He said, but you've got to draw the line somewhere. <laughs> and without missing a beat, he said, and that line is somewhere around Shropshire. <laughs> Very positive person, indeed. <laughs> Who else would have a positive filling? Let's take a look. <laughs> That's right, it's my very good friend, Norfolk-based intensive farmer, Bernard Matthews. <laughs> Bernard is a very positive guy. He gets a lot of flack from the pro-chicken brigade. Um, unnecessarily so, because he really does have chicken's best interests at heart. Um, I was chatting with him about this the other week uh, at a cockfight. Um, <laughs> In, in his front room. <laughs> and I said, I said, Bernard, don't listen to these people. I mean, how much space does a chicken need, really? If you do give them space, they just run around like idiots. So, you know. But he's got, he's got a great sense of humour. Um, I was at a party at his house a few weeks ago, and he said to me, he said, Alan, he said, are you a leg or a breast man? I said, do you mean chickens or ladies? <laughs> and he laughed. He laughed. <laughs> He said, but no, seriously, Alan, he said, when we get them in a confined space, he said, they make a hell of a racket. I said, do you mean chickens or ladies? <laughs> and he laughed again. Yeah. Not quite as loudly as the first time, but uh, he did laugh. <laughs> um, and then he said, no, but seriously, Alan, he said, when they reach a certain weight, we electrocute them, slit their throats, then gut them. Uh, I said, do you mean chickens or ladies? <laughs> and he asked me to leave. <laughs> OK, if a pie had a negative filling, what would that look like? Let's take a look. That's right, it's Chief Superintendent Charles Brownlow from The Bill. <laughs> Don't know his real name. Two years ago, Brownlow, when I told Brownlow two years ago I was going to write, direct, produce and act in my own play about the life of Sir Thomas More, Brownlow said, Don't do it, Alan. You're not a good enough writer. You're not a good enough actor. You'll just look like a tit. <laughs> really, Brownlow? Well, when I put that play on tonight, there's only going to be one tit and it'll be you and you'll be a tit eating a pie. <laughs> and you know what flavour that pie will be? Humble, <laughs> humble pie. 
Uh, by the way, when I had acting lessons for my debut tonight, I hired the best in the business, crocodile shoe-wearing Geordie Hardman, Jimmy Nail. Um, and Jimmy, Jimmy, when he trained me, he said to me, he said, Alan, he said, I didn't fuck a boot. <laughs> and he didn't. He really didn't. <laughs> OK. Now, you're sitting there and you're thinking, OK, Alan, forward solution sounds pretty amazing. But we want to hear it from the horse's mouth. Well, let me introduce to you two horses whom I've rocked into forward solutions. Please clap your hooves for my two rocking horses. I'll just introduce them. Uh, Jackie and Jackie Tootle. <laughs> now, now, Jackie and Jackie Tootle. A little bit confusing. Um, presumably, um, you, you're, you're Jacqueline and you're Jack. Um, no, we're actually both christened Jackie. That's hilarious. <laughs> but to avoid confusion, uh, what I'd like to do is refer to you as woman and you, man. <laughs> now, woman, uh, you were one of the first people to embark on my Forward Solutions programme, weren't you? Yes, well, um, I realised that a lot of my problems stem from my childhood. Right. My mother was very critical of me as a child and she used to tell me I was fat. Bitch. Well, no, she had her own issues. OK, fair enough. Um, but my father wasn't around when I was growing up. All oh, right, bastard. Because he was killed in a car crash. OK, OK, not, not, not a bastard. Well, he was drunk driving, so... OK, so sort of a bastard. Well, no, he had his own issues as well. Well, well make your mind up, love, you know, you can't have it both ways. Well, my therapist says I can, actually. Yeah. 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 Carry on. So, um... Yeah. That was the best part of my life, as you can imagine. Um, oh, uh, right. Sorry. Sh uh, yeah, no, I, yeah, uh, sorry, I've just pressed a button here by mistake, sorry, I'll just sort that, keep, keep, keep going, sorry, okay. sorry about that, I'll just sort um, this out, yeah. So that yeah. wasn't the best start in life, okay. and um, then I met Jackie, who's the love of my life, yeah. and um, as well as us both being called Jackie, uh, we both actually have an allergy to dairy, um, which is quite unusual, isn't it? Um, and, you know, we have to avoid milk yeah. and cheese and... Uh, all sorts of lovely things, um, pizza, for example. But um, if we do have any milk, it does mean that we don't get a bit of that rash. And um, at worst, it can actually get your face puff up and um, stop you from breathing. So we do really have to avoid any type of milk. Um, we have to limit our diet. Because, um, unfortunately, um, our little son is very by another child and um, he did actually have quite a severe allergic reaction oh my God. and it put him in hospital uh, which was terrible for us. I mean, it, did it sounds it. amazing, it really does. Um, ah, here comes my queen. Ah, Catherine of Aragon. Yes. Most, most handsome woman. I think she has some hair on her top lip. Really? I've never noticed, honestly. No, I can feel it when I kiss her. It's almost as if she Don't has... Don't say whiskers. <laughs> I only have eyes for Anne Boleyn. She has me spellbound. But the king is married and the church will not allow a divorce. Silence, Sir Thomas. She comes hither. Anne has a radiance that I fear may be beyond the bounds of marital obligation. Aye, she is fucking gorgeous. I'll give you <laughs> but to matters constitutional. The Pope is the head of the church, and he will not allow you a divorce, so you can simply have it off with Anne Boleyn. The only it I shall have off is your head! When I chop it off, I'll put it on a spike! Ah! Uh... Silence, Sir Thomas. I am not japing around this time. Right, it's very difficult I... to tell with you. I shall create a new church. The Church of England. Your Majesty, I implore you to stop. Assess the damage. Take small steps in the right direction. Hmm. <laughs> That three-pronged plan is most interesting. It is, isn't it? It can be applied to any situation. That's the good thing about it. But the king ignored this advice. 
of his much wiser friend. He made himself head of the church and married Anne Boleyn. Thomas, why wilt thou not accept me as head of the church? I do not think it is a forward solution. <laughs> Bloody loot! <laughs> I'm just tuning it up. But chillax. <laughs> Why do you defy me? I do not think His Majesty is thinking with his royal head, but rather with his regal... Thomas. Cock. <laughs> Thomas! And you're not the head of the church. Thomas! You've been a dear and trusted friend, but I will not stand for this treason! I have a message from the Pope. Oh, lay it upon my table. Christ. Right, um, what's, 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 what's my next line? Where's he gone? Um, you, you are not the head of the church. Thomas, you've been a dear and trusted friend, but I will not stand for this treason! Shit. I have Christ. a message from the Pope. Lay it upon my table. Um, you're not the head of the church. Thomas, you've been a dear and trusted friend, but I will not stand for this treason! I have a message from the Pope. Lay it upon my table. That's the last one. Right, we're stuck in a loop. Um, uh, um, um, uh, your, your Majesty, we, we spoke of this matter. At great length. Where did we have such a conversation? I cannot recall. Why, uh, 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 at Hampton Court in the car park. No, the gift shop. No, the, 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 the maid. Thomas! <laughs> Stop jabbering! Oh, sorry, sorry. I see you are thinking of asking me not to condemn you to death. Cheers. Please don't condemn me to death! Silence! I condemn you to death! Oh, I'll leave that there. <laughs> right, shall I just go to the Tower of London? Yes, that's okay. Good. Good morrow, Your Majesty. I'll just put my hat on. <laughs> Take him to the tower! Unhand me! I'm Roger Moore! Oh shit, I've done it again! <laughs>